Welcome to my course on genome editing and uh, engineering. Uh, we are discussing about ethical concerns in germline editing uh, under module number 12. Uh, in part B of this lecture on bioethics and uh, biosafety, we will continue uh, the discussion uh, which was started in part A. So, uh, when it comes to uh, germline editing or uh, genome editing application uh, in human uh, diseases, which genes and uh, diseases to target uh, is an important uh, question. As per a, a poll in December 2018, uh, US citizens draw the line at the so-called enhancement but favor the use of genetic engineering to address diseases and disability. And uh, which type of disease and disabilities need to be targeted, however, is still an uh, open uh, discussion. Uh, some of the questions that may help inform uh, that decisions are, uh, should there be a focus on infectious uh, disease resistance or whether only fatal conditions are to be considered? Uh, will we decide that there is a need to quantify the degree of uh, sufferings? Uh, if an effective treatment already exists, should we still seek prevention through genetic modification? If childhood versus adulthood onset of illness uh, is an important uh, factor. Uh, not all sequence variants are guaranteed to cause disease. Uh, should they be considered? Uh, what about uh, orphan diseases? And should certain types of disabilities be prioritized uh, over others? Uh, these are very important uh, questions which have been discussed by uh, Rothschild uh, in this article published in 2020 uh, uh, called Ethical Considerations of Gene Editing and Genetic Selection published in Journal of General and Family Medicine. Uh, for more details uh, uh, for those who are interested kindly uh, refer to this uh, particular uh, journal article from which we have uh, drawn these important points raised uh, by uh, this uh, opinion poll. There are certain other important issues uh, uh, in association with this. Uh, for example, in clinical uh, research ethics, the history of research involving human participants has been mirrored by uh, unethical treatment of the participants. The several instances of atrocities done in the name of medical science from Imperial Japan to the uh, Tuzgeki Institute and we have uh, already discussed about uh, the atrocities uh, in, in the Nazi Germany and the Nuremberg trial. And uh, as a result, a number of uh, rules have been created to aid ethical research in the future. Uh, so, uh, uh, we have already discussed at length about the Nuremberg trial and we will not uh, discuss these uh, again due to paucity of time. Then other things are uh, the socioeconomic disparities. The majority of people throughout the world are opposed uh, to genetically modifying embryos to Im Im improve traits like athletic powers and intelligence or to change physical qual qualities like eye color and height according to uh, numerous polls. So, uh, people are thinking about designer babies uh, in this uh, era of uh, gene editing. So, uh, these are uh, very, very important uh, ethical issues and uh, they uh, take us uh, to an era or, or dangerous era of uh, a new eugenics uh, era uh, which has to be avoided. And there are certain uh, possible st stigma which can be associated. Uh, it is challenging to foresee how society will feel about gene edited children, uh, particularly at these early stages in the concepts uh, development. Uh, will Nana and Lulu encounter any negative reactions? So, these are the uh, children which were created by genome edited zygotes by He Jiankui. Uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, them uh, in, in one of the sites later uh, and also He Jiankui. Uh, on the other hand, if and when uh, gene editing is widely used. The, would there be a stigma attached to not having had uh, yeah, one's genes altered such as the fact that you are still susceptible to different uh, infectious uh, diseases? Uh, there are concerns regarding uh, insurance, uh, medical insurance or life insurance because the insurance coverage will play a significant role in the discussions in gene editing will be a tool for treating and preventing diseases. Uh, will the companies uh, pay for uh, the editing itself first. If so, will there be a significant difference between germline and somatic cell editing? Will coverage be determined by the specified ailment or disability? Uh, who will determine what revisions are deemed medically required and what revisions are deemed optional? And 
other perspectives like uh, some believe that gene editing is playing God and it, it is not man's place to alter the fundamental components of humanity. Others worry that the technology once perfected could be used to create designer babies. Others are concerned that creating a market for human eggs for research could result in the exploitation of underprivileged women and still others share the same worries as those who oppose embryonic uh, stem cell research. So these important issues uh, have been adopted from uh, the article by Niemick E. and Howard S.C. Uh, in the ethical issues related to uh, research on genome editing in human embryos published in computational and structural biotechnology uh, journal. Uh, published in 2020. Uh, those who are interested uh, for further details can uh, consult this uh, particular article. Let us now discuss in particular the bioethical issues in genome editing by CRISPR-Cas9 technology uh, leaving aside ZFN and TELEN. Uh, uh, so with uh, CRISPR-Cas9 technology uh, we can develop animal models uh, then we can go for genome editing specific tissues. Uh, in genes, multiple genetic mutations can be done, uh, there can be epigenome studies and then treatment of diseases. It is also useful in industry, uh, then uh, possibility of RNA editing, uh, military applications, uh, DNA replacement in uh, human uh, embryos, the germline genome uh, therapy. Uh, regulations for the consumers, it is particularly challenging to detect and regulate genetically modified organisms in the market after they leave the laboratory since CRISPR-Cas9 is used to achieve the desired genetic alterations uh, and it do not have any markers associated with it. Therefore, regulatory bodies like the European Medicines Agency, the US Food and Drug Administration and others should uh, worry about whether any GMOs are safe for consumers. Uh, it is unclear how to assess the likelihood of a developing industry using CRISPR-Cas9. Uh, patenting is a CRISPR-Cas9 uh, conundrum that affects all of humanity. Uh, the most uh, well-known case is the use of CRISPR-Cas9 in human cells for therapeutic purposes and uh, it involved Zhang, Dodna and Charpentier. It was determined to issue the patent to Caribos and Biosanchez which Dodna founded in the matter. Uh, that was finally resolved on uh, 2nd December uh, 2016. Genome editing for enhancement. In order to bring the desired trait into our lives, CRISPR-Cas9 is being applied to somatic cells at an increasing rate. These characteristics of CRISPR-Cas9 can be utilized to enhance athletic performance, stop violent behavior or lessen uh, dependence uh, as uh, visualized by uh, various scientists. Although gene uh, therapy is frequently utilized to cure people for their own benefit, criminal justice system may eventually oblige recurrent or dangerous criminals to undergo genome editing technologies to fix the genes linked to violence. Uh, these are some of the futuristic uh, scenarios. Uh, one of the major challenges in this situation is obtaining informed consent uh, from a minor if the intervention is undertaken while the zygote is still uh, developing. Additionally, it should be properly debated from a social and moral standpoint because some genetically enhanced groups or individuals may have some advantages over others in terms of various traits like mental and physical uh, aptitude. In military research, the application of CRISPR technology in defense uh, research uh, or purposes is typically covered similarly since it falls under the category of non-therapeutic augmentation. The principles of benefit, risk, informed consent and accessibility are frequently brought up when uh, discussing related bioethical issues from this perspective. Uh, the emergence of an uh, CRISPR army is also uh, raising uh, concerns in the scientific community. And the off-target mutations uh, that have been addressed in relation to other topics are a noteworthy bioethical issue. Off-target mutations have the potential to drastically alter the genome or perhaps cause deadly diseases. There is currently a dearth of knowledge about off-target mutations brought on by CRISPR on the genome. The benefit or risk relationship must therefore be uh, carefully considered. Furthermore, it is uh, terrifying to think that this technology might be applied to the development of uh, new uh, biological uh, weapons. Generations of chimeric animals for organ uh, transplantation. Uh, the creation of chimeric animals may spare patients from wasting valuable time looking uh, for the right donor because chimeras contain human neuron and uh, germ cells creating chimeric animals raises uh, biotechnical concerns. Uh, we have discussed about the humanization of uh, animals especially pigs uh, for uh, organ uh, development uh, in, in, in one of our earlier classes. 
the definition of uh, nature's order and the moral problems brought on by how an organism is treated depending on whether it is regarded as human or an animal can be summed up as the two key issues uh, because chimeric embryos have the capacity to produce uh, individuals with cells and organs uh, derived from uh, humans. Uh, some individuals worry that they may undermine human dignity uh, and, and uh, identity. Uh, the other claims that uh, because chimera uh, or organisms contain human cells uh, cannot transform into human beings, a uh, human uh, dignity is uh, unaffected. Uh, so, uh, certain uh, chimera animals uh, with human cells uh, uh, as uh, pointed in point number 3 uh, are uh, going to raise concerns uh, because uh, it, it, as it is part human uh, whether the human dignity and identity uh, is uh, some kind of under uh, uh, undermined uh, from the point of view of uh, ethics. Uh, they also argue that the human like features imparted to chimeras will neither affect the biological environment uh, nor the moral sense of animals and will never reach uh, human uh, consciousness. The next important issue is the animal welfare and dignity that comes up when using genome editing technology on animals uh, and uh, uh, to begin with there is a chance that off target mutations in the genome will cause diseases or other negative effects in animals. According to several studies using animals as mere props for human use is unethical and immoral and such actions might increase the power of people uh, over animals. Others believe that since there is no moral standard that animals must abide by, there is no need to debate the dignity of animals. According to Sewell's uh, Bargin, since these animals will be created using genome editing technology, their rights, welfare and dignity uh, won't be uh, compromised. However, a majority of people do not agree to these uh, kind of notions. The existence of contrary opinions on this matter indicates that the mentioned bioethical issues will be on uh, the discussion and agenda uh, for a long time in future. Ethical concerns in plant uh, of uh, agricultural gene uh, editing. Uh, the old laws for new techniques provide uh, room for uncertainty. Uh, due to novelty and variety of goods, the majority of national and international laws do not specifically include products of uh, genome editing. Most laws governing biotechnologies use in breeding apply to the use of conventional genetically modified organisms uh, and their byproducts as well as their commercialization. Therefore, for conventional uh, GMOs, the legal status is clear and frequently uh, in line or sync uh, with uh, the def similar definition provided for the Cartesian Protocol, an international agreement that aims to ensure the safe handling, transport and use of so-called uh, living modified organisms resulting from modern biotechnology. The unreasonable argument that has haunted real cell biotechnology could be extended with the introduction of uh, plant uh, genome uh, editing. Method for addressing ethical issues and GMOs. Ethical objections to genetically modified foods typically center on the possibility of harm to persons or other living things. Harm may or may not be justified by outweighing the benefits. Whether harms are justified is a question that ethicists try to answer by working methodically uh, through a series of uh, questions. And in this regard, it is often asked what is the harm uh, envisaged? To provide an adequate answer to this question, we must pay attention to how significant the harm or potential harm may be, who the stakeholders are, that is who are the persons, animals, even ecosystems who may be harmed, the extent to which various stakeholders might be harmed and the distribution of the harms. The last question directs attention to a critical issue, the issue of justice and fairness. Uh, are those who are at risk of being harmed by the action in question different from those who may benefit from the action in question? What are the risks and controversies surrounding the use of uh, GMOs? Despite the fact that the genes being transferred occur naturally in other species, uh, there are unknown sequences to altering the natural state of an organism through uh, foreign gene expression uh, using uh, recombinant DNA technology. After all, such alterations can change the organism's metabolism growth rate and or response to external environmental factors. These consequences influence not only the GMO itself, but also the natural environment in which that organism is allowed to uh, proliferate. Uh, potential uh, health risks to humans include the possibility of exposure to new allergens in genetically modified foods as well as the transfer of antibiotic resistance genes uh, to gut uh, flora. 
horizontal gene transfer of pesticide, herbicide or antibiotic resistance genes to other organisms would not only put humans at risk, but it would also cause ecological imbalances allowing previously innocu innocuous plants to grow uncontrolled, thus promoting the spread of disease among both plants and animals. Although the possibility of horizontal gene transfer between GMOs and other organisms cannot be denied, in reality this risk is considered to be uh, quite low. Horizontal gene transfer occurs naturally at a very low rate and in most cases cannot be simulated in an optimized laboratory environment without active modification of the target genome to increase uh, susceptibility as reported by Ma et al. 2003. In contrast, the alarming consequences of vertical gene transfer between GMOs uh, and their wild type counterparts have been highlighted by studying transgenic fish released into wild populations of the same species. The enhanced mating advantage of the genetically modified fish led to a reduction in the viability of their offspring. Thus, when a new transgene is introduced into a wild fish population, it propagates and may eventually threaten the viability of both the wild type and the genetically modified uh, organisms. Some of the unintended economic consequences are uh, also there. Uh, for example, there is a concern associated with GMOs, GMOs that uh, private companies will claim ownership of the organisms they create and uh, not share them at a reasonable cost with the public. Uh, if these claims are correct, it is argued that use of genetically modified crops will hurt the economy and environment because uh, monoculture practices by large scale farm production centers will dominate over the diversity controlled by small farmers who can't, cannot afford the technology. However, recent meta-analysis of 15 studies reveals that on average two-thirds of the benefits of first generation genetically modified crops are shared downstream, whereas only one-third accrues uh, upstream. Uh, these benefit shares are exhibited in both industrial and developing countries. Therefore, the argument that private companies will not share ownership of GMO is not supported by evidence from first generation genetically uh, modified crops. GMOs and the general public, philosophic and religious concerns. In 2007, a survey of uh, 1000 American adults conducted by the International Food Information Council uh, had uh, some interesting uh, uh, facts. 33 percent of respondents believed that biotech food products would benefit them or their families, uh, but 23 percent of respondents did not know biotech foods has already reached the market. Uh, only uh, 5 percent of those poll uh, said that they would take action by altering their processing habits as a result of concerns associated with using biotic products. Uh, according to the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, public acceptance trends in Europe and Asia are mixed uh, depending on the country and current mood at the time of the survey. Attitudes towards cloning, biotechnology and genetically modified products differ depending upon uh, people's level of education and interpretations of what each of these terms means. Support uh, varies for different types of biotechnologies. However, it is consistently lower when uh, animals are uh, mentioned. Ethical concerns in therapeutic uh, gene editing. Gene editing is have uh, become a common procedure as you can understand from the many discussions we had in this particular course starting from mega nucleases to uh, CRISPR-Cas9. Uh, how about the ethical issues of editing are not just tied to the procedures but also to the use that is made of it. The National Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Medicine uh, in conjunction with the Royal Academy of Sciences and Chinese Academy of Sciences have uh, constituted a committee on human uh, gene editing, uh, scientific medical and ethical uh, considerations uh, shared by Professor Alta Charo and Richard Hines to perform in-depth study on the issues during which input and guidance from multiple stakeholders from around the world will be solicited uh, before issuing a consensus uh, study uh, report. And this is one of the uh, blatant uh, uh, mis misuse of the technology. Uh, on November 25, uh, 2018, he Jiang shocked the world when he broke the news that his team at Southern University of Science and Technology in Shenzhen, China had successfully edited embryos using CRISPR-Cas9 technology and have successfully delivered to uh, baby girls uh, who will be resistant to HIV. We have uh, discussed about the HIV resistance in the Scandinavian population uh, due to the CCR5 Delta 32 uh, mutation. Uh, he Jiang Hui and his team uh, edited these gigots uh, to create the mutation uh, which will uh, make them resistance to HIV. 
Uh, he participated as a speaker at a Genome Summit in Hong Kong uh, and he uh, declared with uh, immense pride of altering the genes of the twin girls so uh, they could not contract HIV in future. Later on it was found a third child was also uh, delivered. Scientists all across the globe uh, condemned He Jiankui and his team's action uh, and raised concern and alarm that gene editing technology was too premature to be used for uh, reproductive uh, purposes. And uh, due to immense international pressure and, and in con line with the Chinese uh, domestic uh, law, he and his associates were uh, convicted of violating a government ban uh, by carrying out his own experiments uh, on human embryos. The court declared that uh, he and his team has acted in the pursuit of personal fame and gain and had seriously disrupted uh, medical order. Uh, he Jiankui was jailed for three years and fined three, three million yuan. Uh, the court also handed lower sentences to uh, two other men, Zhang Renli and Qin uh, Jinjiao for conspiring with he to carry out uh, the experiments. So with this uh, we come to an end uh, on the uh, discussion of uh, bioethics and biosafety. These are some of the uh, articles uh, we have consulted for preparing this uh, particular lecture. Uh, for any details on any of the concepts uh, that we have put forward in this uh, discussion, you may refer to these uh, articles. Uh, thank you for your uh, patient hearing. Mm -hmm.